three years ago, when I completed my master's degree in music, I had two choices in front of me. I could continue to pursue my music, or I could go back to my technology life and continue working with data analytics, artificial intelligence, and machine learning. I chose the latter, and I think I made a great decision because technology has always fascinated and inspired me. And I have also been able to use a lot of my creativity coming from my musical background into my technological pursuit as well. Hello, everyone. My name is Keerthi Ganapati. And my team and I at Google Cloud India help our clients on their digital transformation journey. And data and technology is at the forefront of this. I'm sure you all are keen to know more. So let me dive right into the topic. Have you ever wondered how our brain works? We are constantly processing information in our heads. And this information could come from internal as well as external sources. And this processing occurs due to cognitive intelligence and intuitive logic which our brains are capable of performing by default. Let me explain this with an example. Let's take the monsoon season. It is that time of the year, especially in Maharashtra, when we all want to get out and experience nature in its full glory. The mountains, the fog, the waterfalls, and the abundant greenery, all of this calls out to the nature lover in us. And yes, we want to go out. And at that point of time, we also look at others posting pictures on social media. And we feel, yes, we should be out there. Yes, FOMO is real, right? So at this point, we have two voices in our heads. One is the voice of your heart saying, yes, you must go, get out, and go and enjoy. And the other is the voice of reason, or the voice of your brain, which tells you, Hold on, let's think through this. And here is where we have two choices in front of us, following our heart or following the voice of reason. Which one do we choose? The heart has already made its choice. Now, the cognitive processing of the brain kicks in. The brain looks at all the available parameters in front of it. It is the monsoon season, the season of maladies. You could very well fall sick due to a variety of reasons, maybe the wrong food, that you ate, or because of getting wet in the rain, or simply because of the climate change. You could have to face a lot of crowd there. Are you ready for it? Maybe you would get stuck in a traffic jam and spend most of your time on the road. Now, these are some of the parameters that the brain uses to arrive at its own decision. And that decision could well be different from the decision of your heart. So your brain could choose to reject the original decision that you made. So this capability of the human brain to make such informed decisions on the basis of understanding, on the basis of your past experiences and senses is called cognitive processing. So the brain intuitively and logically works through all of these parameters to come up with its decision. So these functions such as learning, memorizing, understanding, reasoning, making judgments, etc., all fall into the realm of cognitive intelligence. Now, there is one more parameter that we should be considering. Who are we making this decision for? If you think about it, whenever you make a decision for yourself, you tend to follow your heart more. You tend to take more risks, be more carefree, and want to go out and explore more. However, if you were to make the decision for somebody else, you would think twice or even thrice. For instance, if I were to go out on my own, I would probably say, yes, let me go for it. However, if I were to take my children along, I would think about it. I would think whether it's a good idea or not. Relate this to how doctors prescribe medicines for their patients. Here, doctors are making the decision for somebody else. They look at not only the patient's current medical history, but also the past history, as well as allergy, if any, et cetera, and then come up with a decision. So this is the primary difference between your emotive brain and your logical brain. 
Now, we've spoken at length about the cognitive element of the brain. Now, how does technology fit in here? You are exposed to a lot of content on a daily basis. This could be in the form of YouTube videos, Twitter feeds, Instagram, Facebook, even the ads that you're exposed to when you get out of your house. All of these adds to the information that you are consuming on a daily basis. Let us look at YouTube. Once you complete watching a video on YouTube, you will see that YouTube gives you another recommendation. And most often than that, you would end up watching that recommended video too. So how does this recommendation engine work? How are modern healthcare systems able to predict illnesses so accurately? How are logistics and routing systems able to optimize a route, a shipping route, on a real-time basis? All of this has been made possible due to data science. Data science is a branch of science that uses statistical algorithms to come up with a result based on data that is already available. Now, this data, again, could come from both internal or external sources. And this data is processed to come up with a final output. And this is done in a very clinical fashion in a short period of time. If I were to look at an example of another domain, let me take the example of the retail industry. And within the retail industry, I will talk about one particular use case, which is the probability of a customer buying a particular product. If you were to go into a store, you still rely on the shopkeeper or the helpers in the store to help you with the right product. Now, if I were to use technology instead, I would generate statistics based on a variety of parameters, based on the customer's past purchase history, based on product performance, based on the type of people who have bought the product in the past, etc. All of these would be used to arrive at a decision on the product to be purchased. Now, the customer could either choose to buy the product that is recommended or not. If the customer chooses to go ahead, well, all is good. But if not, what is that one particular parameter on the basis of which the customer did not purchase the product? How do we identify that? Here is where data science steps in again to help you sift through voluminous amount of data to identify that missing parameter that could have resulted in the customer not buying the product. And this is then applied to machines. Imagine if you as a human being had to process this large amount of data. Would you be able to do it in a short amount of time? No. You would probably take an eternity. However, when machines come in, machines bring in the capability to process this data in a shorter time frame. Now imagine if we were to further enhance this, these machines and further add either additional power to them or maybe uh, you know, uh, give them the capability to run several jobs or several tasks in parallel at once. That would be really changing the game of technology. And this is something that large tech companies are actually trying to do. Let, let me again talk about one example. When Google created Magenta, almost six years ago, it was revolutionary. Magenta is an open source project based on TensorFlow that can actually analyze snippets of music and extract and absorb certain elements from these snippets to come up with its own original music that could then be further enhanced by musicians. And a lot of musicians have since then used Magenta to come up with their own creative music, musical pieces as well. But let's take the example of a human musician who is playing in front of a large audience such as yours. This musician is constantly gauging the reaction of the audience and adjusting the music that he or she plays. The human being is capable of creative evolution, creative adaptability, and thinking on the fly, which machines may or may not be able to do. 
Now imagine if machines were actually able to do something like this. That would again be revolutionary. And that is where the human element of creativity comes in. While scientists are trying to feed in more and more creative samples to machines and to these machine learning algorithms, I think we are still some way off before machines are able to accurately reproduce music the way human beings can. Let's take another example of natural language processing. Now, natural language processing is not only about identifying the sentiment of a particular word. It is also about understanding the context in which the word is used, the position of the word in the sentence, and all the various connotations surrounding it. Here again, we are looking at large amounts of information to be processed in a fairly short amount of time. So machine learning still works best here, in spite of the fact that an emotion like sarcasm is something that machines are still not able to accurately interpret. But because we're dealing with large amounts of information, we do need machines here to process this in a fairly short period of time. And today, we have seen so many advances in natural language processing that we even have something called large language models, which actually need very little training data to be able to predict to a good level of accuracy. We humans are constantly evolving. We are trying to evolve ourselves. And at the same time, since it's us humans who has created technology, Technology is also evolving along with us. Today, we do have AI robots that can converse and perform tasks like human beings. So we are getting there slowly. Going back to my shopkeeper example, while the shopkeeper added more context to our interactions because of the past emotional data that he or she may have had because of our past interactions, imagine if AI and ML could actually do something similar? What if in-store cameras could actually read a customer's moods and emotion as he or she walks in and tailor their services accordingly? How powerful would that be? However, the technologist in me is excited about the future possibilities that this technology can bring in. But where will that take us? Let's wait and watch. Thank you very much.